Thank you. And I think some kind of strong messages near the end there, in particular in terms of the transformational opportunity that we have as a citizens' assembly members on this issue of drugs to, to make a difference, whatever way that is. But it is an opportunity that can't be underestimated. Um, okay, I'm going to move now straight away to Nicola Corrigan. It's a nice segue in from that presentation. And Nicola is the social inclusion from the social inclusion office in the HSE, but is going to give us more insight into the SARA program as well. Nicola. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, that was a really interesting presentation from Cork and fits nicely with what I'm going to talk to you about today, which is the SARA screening and brief intervention program and what happens. Um, within a health diversion programme. So I'm from the HSC National Social Inclusion Office and I'm the lead for uh, the SARE project there. And I've been involved in the health diversion programme implementation group since 2019 as well. So health diversion you'll have heard about from colleagues at, at previous assemblies. So I'm not going to go over it again, except to say that the intention is that if a person is found by Angarda Shikona in possession of drugs for personal use, that they're offered the option to attend the HSC for a health intervention. And that health intervention is the HSC SARE program. Um, so last year, the HSC began working on establishing a SARE service in each of our community healthcare organisation areas. We secured funding for nine practitioners, um, and we developed standard operating procedures and job, job descriptions for those. We worked with Queen's University in Belfast to develop an outcome framework to monitor and evaluate this programme. Uh, we have engaged software packaging for recording and we've been working closely with the HRB on the National Drug Treatment Reporting System. So what is uh, a brief intervention? Um, or rather, where am I? Oh yeah, I'm losing myself. So the nine SARE practitioners, we have two already in place and we have seven who are in the process of being recruited. And what they're going to be doing is delivering the intervention um, to people who choose that option. They'll also be working to establish local referral pathways in their area. And you heard from Joe Kirby there how important it is to be able to link with local services, um, make those onward referrals if necessary, and then reporting via the, the HRB and to ourselves on, on outcomes. So what's a brief intervention? Uh, SARE, what is SARE? A, a brief intervention is a motivational conversation. It's a very short motivational conversation with somebody about their drug and alcohol use. And it can take place in a variety of settings and it can be delivered by a variety of people. And it can take anywhere from five to 25 minutes. Um, in this context, it'll be delivered by a SARE, the SARE practitioner and, and we'll likely allocate an hour for that. Um, we know from the EMCDDA that a brief intervention is a uh, tool to prevent substance use and reduce the risk of escalating um, into dependence or harmful use. Uh, it works well as an intervention where you don't know the nature and extent of somebody's drug use and they walk in the door, so you can see why it's a, it's a fit for something like health diversion. Um, and it is not a long-term treatment programme, it is an early intervention and prevention tool. Um, are screenings and brief interventions uh, effective? There's many studies over many decades showing that brief intervention is a useful tool um, com in comparison to people who don't receive any intervention. I've given you some there, I'm, I'm not going to go through them, but the, the last two are more recent publications that do mention uh, brief intervention, um, particularly in the context of the criminal justice system. So SARE specifically, uh, that was developed um, pre-2009 by our colleagues Paul O'Shea, uh, or Jim O'Shea, Paul Gough and Ruth Armstrong. It's a HSC brief intervention and it was developed for nurses originally in, in acute settings. But as we know from brief intervention, it can be applied in, in across a variety of settings. So it's been expanded since then and we have many trainers delivering SARE to many different types of people um, across the country. But in this space, we now know it's the, the health intervention that will be offered for the health diversion programme. And it's based on motivational interviewing. So it's a, a collaborative conversation between um, the practitioner and the person exploring their own drug and alcohol use. So the structure around SARE is support, ask and assess, offer assistance and refer. And we're going to take a, just a brief look at what happens there. So when someone comes in to the HSE for their health intervention, 
we're, the first thing we want to do is try and establish a safe space for somebody to be able to talk about their, their drug and alcohol use. And we do that by using a very open and friendly and person-centred style in line with motivational interviewing, being respectful, asking permission all along the way. Is it okay if we discuss this? Is it okay if we discuss that? And supporting the person to examine their own uh, drug use and their own reasons for, for change. So ask and assess. So we, we don't know who's coming through the door and we know that people are more likely to discuss change when they're being asked rather than being lectured to. And we do need to elicit what's the nature and extent of, of drug use. So there's a number of ways we can do that. We can do that via uh, an evidence-based screening tool like a DUDIT, um, the Drug Use Disorder Identification Test. Or it mightn't be appropriate, you have to read the room, it mightn't be um, as formal as that. Maybe we'll ask a question like, how many times in the past year have you used an illegal drug or used a prescription medication for non-medical reasons? Or it could be in the context of the conversation, can you tell me a bit more about what happens when you use cocaine? Offering assistance, the emphasis here is on the offer. So we can go through options, um, we can... We can give harm reduction advice, we can talk about what's available in somebody's uh, area and ultimately it's up to the person themselves to uh, decide what their next step is. The final part of the SAIR, of the SAOR, is refer and it is important to point out at this, uh, at this stage that up until this point, the brief intervention in and of itself may be enough and for the vast majority of people, the brief intervention is enough for someone to begin to reframe their own drug and alcohol use and have a think about it in a different way. But for the uh, small cohort of people who do need onward referral and studies generally tell us it's around 10% and I heard Joe Kirby saying in Cork it's 11, um, then we need to discuss those options with them and see what, what it is they want to do. Everything obviously is with consent. Do they want an honour referral and to where? How do we know uh, if someone may need um, a specialist service? We'll know from the screening questions. If we haven't done the screening questions, we'll know. These are very skilled practitioners. Um, if someone is presenting as being unwell, or if during the course of the conversation they've talked about, let's say, um, repeated visits to A&E with injuries or self-harm. Also, it could be none of the above, and the person themselves might say, actually, I think I'd quite like some help with X, Y, and Z, and we'll make an appropriate referral onwards. So the SAIR, really, just to, to sum up what happens when someone comes in, you're supporting the person, you're providing a safe space to, to allow the person to talk and have a chat. We're asking and assessing, which we're figuring out what the nature and extent of that drug use is with the person and what it is they'd like to do. We're offering assistance, so we're giving a menu of options and letting them know what's there and what they, they we also have an opportunity to give some harm reduction advice and to reinforce positive behaviours there as well. And then for that cohort who do need honour referral, we can link them with the right support. So I want to just uh, conclude really with looking at monitoring and evaluation because brief interventions aren't new and SARE is around for a very long time, but the Health Diversion Programme will be new to Ireland and SARE in this space is new. So we really need to monitor the efficacy of it in this space and we've that set up um, now. So we've been working with the Health Research Board have been um, really supportive and they have set up a field in, on health diversion in the National Drug Treatment Reporting System and we're continuing to talk to them about how we might use that, uh, particularly for people who might need an onward referral. Um, we have also the Queen's University Belfast piece that I, that I spoke about that we concluded last year and they've developed an outcome framework for SARE. Um, measures and outcomes that we can use to measure its efficacy in this space and particular to this space. And they have 17 questions in that covering recent drug use, average consumption, the impact of drug use, uh, their knowledge of the impact of drug use and quality of life. So what they recommend is measurement at baseline, so when the person first comes in, and then follow-up measurements possibly at 3, 6 and 12 months. Just one minute, Nicola, to say that. Thank you. One minute. Well. Um, so we'll be following up with them and we'll be doing that via the software package um, and with their consent uh, so that we can really see how uh, SARE will be working in this space. Um, so with that, thank you very much thank you, for Nicola. your attention. Thank you.